climate change group implodes from their own whiteness. Woman punches crocodile repeatedly. Jeff Bezos called upon to buy the Mona Lisa, then eat it. Cross falls over, crushes drummer. Classic. There are women in the Bible. <laughs> Where? All this and more on... The Bee Weekly. Hey, everybody. I want to tell you about a Kickstarter board game I backed called Deliverance. You might be imagining the sound of banjos. That's Deliverance, right? Mm -hmm. Or metal music, but this is not that at all. Deliverance is an epic Christian fantasy dungeon crawl board game, which are not words that you would typically expect to be together, <laughs> mm -hmm. but they are. And I'm I'm a bit, oh yeah, see, that says that I'm even a bit shocked to put those words together. Uh, Christian fantasy dungeon crawl board game. As soon as I saw the quality of the art, I knew I needed it in my home immediately. Mm. Ethan didn't think the same thing, but I it's thought good that. art. Uh, I <laughs> I played it a few times and I'm completely sold on its awesomeness. It's so good that I bet we even get Scrooge McEthan to play it. Well, probably not. Mm -hmm. Without falling asleep this time. The first time it was... Uh, well, you didn't fall asleep. I didn't you fall just, asleep. I just was yeah, really yeah. baffled. In all seriousness of playing an elite angelic warrior and slaying the forces of darkness while protecting saints sounds awesome to you. Go back. Deliverance on Kickstarter. You should. Do Are you play board games, Callum? I do. Huh. Yeah. Settlers of Catan. Mm. <laughs> Wait, there's a Mormon version. Settlers, Have you played the Mormon? Settlers of Utah? No, it's, no. it's Settlers of Z. Of the Z. What? Settlers of Zion. Zara Hemla. Zara Hemla. Zara Hemla. Yeah. What's that? I don't know. I don't know. Is that a Mormon joke? <laughs> <laughs> you knew the word, so I thought. <laughs> it's a city. It's a, in the ancient city that you'd find in the Bo Book of Mormon. Oh, it wasn't? Okay. Oh, okay. If you guys okay. would just read the one that I gave you. <laughs> <laughs> so much material as he drops off every time he comes by. Can't read it all. Can't read it. It's too much. <laughs> hey guys, you should tune in to our interview with Stephen Meyer this Tuesday. Yeah, He's a smart, intelligent one. design guy that was like super smart. It was like talking to Stephen Hawking, but without the voice. Right. <laughs> right. Just talking, but s smart talking, and also like talking to a normal person. <laughs> <laughs> And it was awesome. So it's on Tuesday and Monday if you're a Babylon Bee subscriber. Yeah. Do that. This is Subscriber Day. So uh, this week, so we haven't done a Subscriber Day in a while. It's been a little while. Yeah. We're not getting good ones. So people send us, you know, they say, do this and then we'll subscribe. And that means not subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is fine. We want you to do that. But this is a paid subscription to the Babylon Bee on the website at babylonbee.com slash plans. So uh, this one says, hi, are you, uh, this is from Jennifer. Hey, are you guys still doing the subscriber dares? I'll upgrade my subscription to custom, which I hopefully that means more money, not customized to less money. <laughs> if you guys could say happy birthday to my son, Noah Myers. He turned 16 today. I'm sure you have many biggest fans, but he is one of the many. We listen to you guys every day on the way home from school. We listen and giggle the whole way home. We teach each other your headlines. Text each, text each other. Teach. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids, here yeah. it is. Up on the <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making us laugh at things instead of crying over how crazy this world is. Does Hap that count as I read it? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Noah. Noah. Hmm. Is there anything more clever than that? Uh, Noah, what, okay, he's 16. he 16. What would you tell your 16-year-old self oh, right man. now if you met him? Gosh. I would say, so one thing I, looked, I realized when I looked back on my high school career, every girl I had a crush on, if I had asked them out, they would have said yes. I found out later that they all had crushes on me. I was too scared to ask. Hmm. I, I let this friendship thing linger on when I wouldn't admit that I liked them. You like a girl? Ask her on a date. She says no. Move on. That's what I would have told myself. I would say don't date any girl. So. Or yeah, but yeah, or that. <laughs> the nice little date. The know? opposite. <laughs> go, go to dance, you know. Yeah, right. I would say if you're going to dare someone, give them a real dare. <laughs> <laughs> I dare this you. This is for his mom. <laughs> I dare you to say happy birthday to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to make Double me dog dare. Special on my dog. day. Truth or dare. <laughs> we did the dare. We did it. We're back. Turnip. <laughs> Can't say that. Yeah. yeah. Weird news. Some bleep. Let's do some weird news. Please. This news is weird. Hey, you guys remember that lady that put gorilla glue in her hair? Yeah. She now has her own line of hairspray called Forever Hole. <laughs> So she liked it. So she was like, oh, this isn't bad. Yeah, she was. She went viral and she sprayed Gorilla Glue into her hair. So that was, was a like, real. 
Yeah, this was like on TikTok, and she's like knocking on her head, like, "Oh my gosh, it doesn't come out." And, you know, it's like, well, it's basically like liquid yeah. nails. Yeah. And hmm. uh, so she was kind of a meme for a while, and everybody was making fun of her. But Tessica has launched her own fourteen dollars a bottle line called Forever Hold, and an eighteen dollar hair growth oil as well. Hmm. So hair growth oil, they have that. I, I guess. Huh. That's what this says here on Forever my screen. Grow. Yeah. That's crazy. To like, I think it's great to yeah. capitalize. Yeah, I'm sure. On You're gonna a become mistake. a meme. Might as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's like what half my jokes are. <laughs> 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 I like. How many? How many people out there now though are gonna just like? You know, every other video on America's Funniest Home Videos is like yeah. some dad getting hit in the genitals with a <laughs> wiffle ball bat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to capitalize on that. So like, like, what you now mean? I'm launching my own sports line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a line of cups or I, I don't know what. <laughs> Jock straps. Jock yeah. Straps yeah. <laughs> the guys who biff it on trampolines. Yeah. <laughs> this trampoline can handle a man of my giant size. But why would you buy the hair product from the lady who put Gorilla Glue? I don't know. It doesn't seem. Maybe the maybe the product says on it this is ac- this is not super glue. Not in super large glue. letters not. on it. Yeah. <laughs> it it solves a problem that she had. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Cool. People okay. that need that clarity on their products. We wish Tessica all the best. Jessica. Climate change activist group dissolves itself because it's too white. School strike for climate from. New Zealand? Yeah, so in Auckland, uh, they have this climate activist group, School Strike for Climate, that's what you're saying, recently announced they're disbanding. It's over, guys. Their reason, quote, BIPOC communities are disproportionately affected by climate change, so the fight for climate justice should be led by their voices and needs. We are disbanding because since 2019, School Strike for Climate has been a racist, white-dominated space. I like that they're looking around like the world is ending. It's burning. (laughs) But wait a minute. <laughs> you guys get this. <laughs> wait, look at us. Look yeah, at our skin. <laughs> we're all It's white. such a strange crossover of two different issues. Yeah. Like you think you I could, guess it, any race could save the climate, you'd think. Yeah. But, uh, okay. It feels like when... Almost uh, any race, Ethan. Almost. almost <laughs> except, for, yeah, except for one. <laughs> They've done enough. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, to me, it's like, this is... Passive aggressive racism. <laughs> <laughs> it's very strange. <laughs> it reminds you a lot of the, uh, like I was at CVS the other day and my f- four year old had to go to the bathroom and they're like, the bathrooms are closed because of COVID. I'm like, how does it help? My, she's going to pee on the floor. Like, is that bad for COVID? Because <laughs> it feels like people are doing lazy things because oh, yeah. of COVID, right? Like, on the planes, they don't, you know, they give you a little baggie of garbage to eat. Yeah. And, uh, like, they're just, everything's lazier. Oh, yeah. I went, I went to McDonald's yesterday. You can finally, like, in California, you can walk in mm. and everything is caution taped off. They're like, yeah, I mean, you can stand in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we still don't, we don't want you to linger. I think a lot of businesses enjoyed not having yeah. patrons oh, messing up their stuff. Yeah. Yeah, the gas station that I stop to on the way to work all the time, that they, they've they've got a, their bathrooms still taped off, and it's like I'm just like I know <laughs> will they ever open? I know what yeah. you're doing. They just here. don't want to clean the bathrooms. <laughs> I don't admit, blame you, but I know what you're doing. But this feels like to me like you know white people have cleaned enough bathrooms. We're going to hand this off sure. to the BIPOC community. <laughs> <laughs> the race the the bathroom cleaning community is racist. I need to try to do this with my job. Like we won't be writing any satirical articles. Co- COVID. <laughs> all right you got the next one kellen number three so what do i do i just read it just read it read the headline (laughs) yeah sorry we should have prepared you for this that's all you have to come in you You got in like two and a half hours early (laughs) i thought you guys were prepping i I forgot to tell me has to read headlines number you don't have to if you don't want to (laughs) florida city accidentally sells its water tower (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Last year, a resident approached the city of Brooksville, Florida, regarding a small building near the water tower. He wanted to purchase their rarely used building and open up a gym. <laughs> you sound so <laughs> sad when you talk. <laughs> <laughs> so the city, I'm going to summarize what yeah, I think is supposed to be summarized already. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> the city sold the building to the man for 55 grand, and then Jeez. they found out afterwards that a water tower was actually on the property. <laughs> <laughs> like the city's water supply? Does that work? I don't know. Yeah. Just crazy because I like I sold a car once. And then I had to call the guy back like an hour later because I left the baby seat inside it. <laughs> but how does this phone call go? Like, I think we left something in your backyard. I think have we you have seen, our water tower. <laughs> All the water seen, like, for our entire city. <laughs> is that a water tower's work? Is that the water supply for the city? I don't think it's the whole water supply. But I don't, it is, I've never water, got what the point of them was. Yeah, it's the water pressure because if it's up high. Oh. Yeah, but how did they get it up there if there wasn't any pressure? <laughs> yeah, how do they get the pressure in the first place? Buckets. <laughs> <laughs> do the the animaniacs live up there? That's what they do. <laughs> That's what <Yeah>. it is. <laughs> I guess he was a nice so he was guy, nice. And, yeah. and, and he let him have it. I wonder if he sold it back to him. It says he deeded it's it. Hundred grand. It says he deeded it back to them, which sounds like he did it. Deeded. He deeded. It. <laughs> I deeded it. So I guess that means he gave it to him. So okay. good for him. What a guy. Women. He's like, I already painted my name on it. <laughs> like <what? laughs> Bob. <laughs> Bob's water tower. Like you've had it for two hours. <laughs> A uh, woman saves her twin from the jaws of a crocodile by punching it over and over in the face. <laughs> Is that how I was supposed to read this? I'm going well, to read the rest like you. <laughs> a set of twins were swimming in a Mexican lagoon during a boat tour. <laughs> yeah, okay. But you have like, you have like Captain Kirk enunciation with you. <laughs> over. Attacked and by a crocodile. Over. In. The face. The, <laughs> this feels like a story that we need to just watch a video of. Yeah, is there a video? Is there a video? I don't this? think there is. I don't know. Don't this know. one isn't that funny to me. It's like what anyone would do. Like, yeah, right. it's not that interesting. Like, if she did I do anything, it would be a story. But when you're the twin of somebody, like, you see yourself in that situation. Like, that's what that's I think me. is interesting. Like, that's, that's me <laughs> getting eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> it, make, it makes it really personal. I'm going to punch it. And then you punch it harder, probably. Maybe she got that, you know, strength moms have yeah, when like they the lift a car stuff. off their child. Oh, sure, yeah. So he's like, my twin is getting eaten by a crocodile. Because <laughs> I don't know if crocodiles react to punching that much. They, You know, they got thick skin. Yeah. Like whenever they have a product that's thick, they name it crocodile something. Yeah, crocodile phone case. Crocodile leather. Crocodile body. Crocodile ice chest. Like bike tires. They name them after crocodiles if they don't get poked. Mm. They don't get whatever. <laughs> The real story Needles. here Punctured. It, is Punctured, that... Punctured, that's the word. Uh, it was at a pool uh, of a Motel 6. <laughs> what? <laughs> is that real? That's, that's a, <laughs> no. Did you just punch up a story, like a real life story? I'm going to make this real life story funnier. <laughs> <laughs> How old were they, too? I was like, eight-year-olds or... I don't know. Yeah. But uh, cool. Is it my turn? See. Si. Yeah, you just read that. Have me. you ever had to save one of your kids from an animal? Have you? I haven't. Good I answer. asked you. That's not how you answer questions. <laughs> I answered. Okay. I said no. Oh, okay. Oh, got it. You sound like you're teeing up a story. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to. That's why I asked you so that I could think I of. I can't think had. of an animal that's ever. Uh, oh, well, my, my daughter got bit by a crazy pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would qualify. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you're like, no, no nothing. I forgot. Other than this I, pig. <laughs> Other than the wild boar that skewered her. It was a... Okay, so we were at this like Airbnb with like a farm on it. And so it was like kind of like you could go out and see the animals. There were these horses and like the chickens like to ride on the horses. That was cool. And there was this pig and he had a little space where he could stick his head out. Almost like a Disney on thing where it's like an animatronic pig. But he couldn't get out when he just had his head. So I was petting the pig and he was great. So then I brought my three-year-old daughter up like, oh, let's pet this pig. And it's like a real hairy pig. Kind of a blackish colored brown pig. And she goes to pet it and immediately goes, oh, 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 man. And just like puts his mouth on her arm and just starts gnawing. And I'm just like, ah, I pulled her away from it. How do you really? It's okay. And she was Hakuna traumatized, Matata. man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my kid, my kid did get bit by a goose one time. I got uh, mad when I remember that video a couple of years ago. This girl got uh, essentially canceled because she kicked a goose and someone caught it on film. But like, if you've ever she been should, around geese, she should be a star. Worst bird. Hey, she should oh, yeah. be a hero. Birds already suck, but like geese are the worst. Their poop is like dog poop. First of all, have you seen it? Right. Oh well, yeah. It's big. 
Do they have the white yeah. stuff like most birds or no? No, it's like green. It's like oh, a it's mix green, between yeah. horse and dog poop. Yeah. They're, they're the worst. I'm complaining about them so you know that I'm rich. Live around <laughs> a lot of geese. I live by a lake. Um, <laughs> But they're like they'll they'll like bark yeah. at you. They snap at you. They're, yeah, they're like as a cobra big head. as most kids. Yeah, and yeah. they're they're like aggressive about it. They're mean. Yeah, yeah. I always thought. I mean, we chickens get a really bad uh, end of the deal in our culture. And I think why aren't we eating goose nuggets, goose strips? Because we should eat all of them. <laughs> we hate them. They're horrible. <laughs> you know, chickens are fairly. I mean, they're they're not nice either. But. You should just eat the roosters. Those are the jerks. Yeah, those are the big jerks. Of chickens. Yeah. So, yeah, I hate geese. I don't know if you've seen my goose fighting video. No. So, if you ever go on YouTube and check out my goose fighting, I made an, an animation for a guy just, just beating up all these geese. <laughs> it's anyway, fun. Somehow got the Babylon Bee to post it. I got the Babylon Bee to post it. It's on my channel in the Babylon Bee channel. <laughs> There's a growing petition asking Jeff Bezos to buy the Mona Lisa and then eat it. Okay. So this is just the internet being very is internet just the internet being the internet? I guess people are over COVID because <laughs> last year, last year there were thousands of people that are like, why isn't Jeff Bezos giving his billions of dollars <laughs> yeah. to unemployed people? I guess everyone's fine now. And they're like, maybe he should just like eat paintings. Eat the Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah. How would he eat it slowly with a fork and knife? And you wouldn't know if the Mona Lisa liked it or not. <laughs> yeah, she's hard to read. This is all. <laughs> this is almost a non-story. <laughs> it's just dumb. The, the it only had four hundred something signatures. This isn't even like an internet phenomenon. It has it's, more than thirteen thousand now. Oh, really? Yeah. It says the that story right I'm reading says four hundred, but uh, yeah, thirteen thousand. Okay. We're just we're we're giving it a signal boost. All anything. right. Well, I'll go sign the petition or something. <laughs> I guess. Whatever. I'm sorry. Now you guys are like reflecting my energy. <laughs> You're bringing us down. Ugh, I guess it's your turn. <laughs> hey, All what, right. what happened to the Tasmanian devils? I guess we'll let Kellen take this Can one. I do this one? Are you okay yeah. with penguins? <laughs> <laughs> Tasmanian devils were given a safe island home. Then they slaughtered 3,000 penguins. <laughs> <laughs> so they were trying to save them. To save the Tasmanian devil population. Right. And they were given a, a little home called Maria Island. And then they started to notice that the penguin population was decreasing. <laughs> right. <laughs> so this island, uh, they said it was an ideal location for the devils. Only 28 were released on the island, which grew to about 100. And 100 Tasmanian devils ate 3,000 penguins. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a I lot. A, I have a couple questions. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> I didn't know they could share a habitat. I didn't realize Tasmanian devils and penguins could live in the same. I thought. Yeah, like there's a cold. Yeah, like is this like an cold? icy place? Or are they trying to kill the Tasmanian devils? Like, we're going to freeze them out. I want to go to this island. How neat would it be to go there and just see all these like little brown tornadoes? <laughs> <laughs> just. just <laughs> Just turning penguins into into mist, <laughs> bloody mist. That's my other question, though: is how do you know? How do you know three thousand? Like, is there a consensus? Yeah, I always wonder about the animal a, numbers. How do they estimate? Census they take every year. Yeah, <laughs> like three thousand of them didn't register this year. Yeah, they have some kind of predator <laughs> heat sensor of how many penguins are on the island or something. Hmm. Who knows? They're the scientists. We aren't zoologists. Sad. Not uh, good. But this, I mean, this always happens when, when we try and like relocate nature. It yeah, never, works never works out, out. other yeah. than for like rats. <laughs> That's what Eric Wohler, the representative of BirdLife Tasmania, told The Guardian. He said, every time humans have deliberately or accidentally introduced mammals to oceanic islands, there's always been the same outcome, a catastrophic impact on one or more bird species. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, well, that's a common I, saying. I would. <laughs> that was in my high school year. That, that was trope. the quote under. Yeah, that was. Yeah, my senior year. I'm no zoologist, but I, <laughs> I would say that penguin of all the bird species, the ones that can't fly are going to be affected the most. Probably <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, the ones that <laughs> that Any, walk like a, a five foot overweight woman. Yes, <laughs> in IKEA. Why, why does it have to be a woman? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Man or woman. <laughs> Dudes walk normal. Or trans woman. I just Anything. think that most birds could just like, if there's something <laughs> dangerous, it, it'll just fly away. Right. You know. 
Yeah. Penguins need to be able to slide away. They got to have little slides everywhere. This happens onto. all the time. Like the 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 history, the whole history of Yellowstone. This is mm. what happened, you know, where they they try and take out the wolves, and then the deer and elk just took over and damaged like most of the trees. So then the beavers left, and then the <laughs> rivers were rerouted. Lots yeah, it's this gentrification. Whole, there. <laughs> in Yellowstone. There was that old lady who swallowed the fly. That happened. It's the same thing. Yeah. Real it's like that. Yeah, like that historical <laughs> thing that occurred. <laughs> Hey, we got one more weird news story, and it's that a man made 60 naked skydiving jumps <laughs> in 24 hours, and he got a Guinness record for him. <laughs> yeah, well, he wasn't really naked. He had his safety equipment on. And so, hey, you have to be wearing something to skydive, yeah, right? Like, you can't do it full It would be naked. much more impressive if he was completely Actually naked. Actually naked in 24 <laughs> times. Survived it again. <laughs> He's just more beaten up each time. <laughs> back up uh, that is funny though about being <laughs> naked you like you really are you really you are really, you st yeah. you're still naked like that's yeah, not sure. something you can tell the police right. but i was wearing a backpack <laughs> <laughs> this is <laughs> can you imagine i can't imagine like he must have been doing this in the middle of nowhere because like <laughs> like accident some, yeah drift some, off into an elementary school usually skydiving like, is <laughs> they usually don't do skydiving in metropolitan areas <laughs> yeah, <laughs> typically <laughs> i just imagine like like a kid and his mom and they're like it's a bird a plane, <laughs> a sexual predator. <laughs> so it says that he contacted Guinness World Records because there wasn't a category for this. And he said, hey, could I set a record for the most naked skydiving jumps in 24 hours? And they said, yeah, as long as you do at least 25. <laughs> so arbitrary. So it's, the it's the standard. <laughs> but it, oh, and he did 60. And he did 60. In like 24 If you do 24, hours. that's not, that doesn't, What is not the clothed record? <laughs> from, yeah, I don't know. Because I want to know if, like, if he put clothes on, would he be in a whole new bracket? <laughs> if Yeah, it would be a different weight class, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I'd be afraid of, like, drones. <laughs> <laughs> like with the cameras or, like, landing on them? Landing on them. They're made afraid. of propellers. Can you imagine just yeah, falling? Just a, there's all kinds of bad places you could land. Yeah. No, but drones are flying. Right. I'm not saying a parked drone on right. the ground. <laughs> right, you don't want to, like, hit it. But... The sky the is a big area. Worse. There's a lot of space. <laughs> the, sky <is> <laughs> the sky is big, yes. The sky is a big... The sky there's is a lot big. of... I mean, it's the chance of hitting a drone is probably not. <laughs> the in-depth analysis from I mean, the it was, Did they film it with drones? <laughs> it was just a, just a joke, but... <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I can understand the rarity of those during this segment, but I understand how physics works. It's what I think about, like when you go to states that don't require, a, you know, a, a motorcycle helmet. I think it's so bizarre because, like, I've had, uh, I've driven by in a cement truck and had a piece of gravel, gravel crack my windshield. Mm -hmm. I think about that every time I see a guy on a motorcycle, you know, without a helmet. Mm. So that, I mean, skydiving, you're just opening up your whole body to. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're naked. <laughs> Your whole body. You're really open. Yeah. Doesn't this sound like a dream that all of us have had in the middle of <laughs> class? <laughs> <laughs> sure, go wake. I was skydiving a bunch of times and I was naked. Yes, 20, 60 times in 24 hours. I got a record for it. They gave me a trophy. <laughs> hey, sorry to interrupt that hilarious podcast that you were just listening to, but my buddy Ethan and I here were thinking, you mm -hmm. might not be a Babylon Bee subscriber and we need to correct that. Yeah, in fact, I could smell it in the room. It smells like a non-subscriber in here. Or is that cow farts? <laughs> could be cow farts. I can't tell. Hey, if you subscribe, you get this giant, awesome, beautiful coffee table book full of beautiful images. What? And hilarious stories. Premium subscribers get this for a limited time, which is crazy because this book is like half the cost of a Babylonian It's like a brick of gold. Anyway, and yeah, yeah. it's awesome. So you get a coupon code for cheaper merchandise. You get to be part of the community. The, the advantages are endless to be a Babylon Bee subscriber. Literally infinite. Team. Oh, you get our bloopers from our. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are really fun. Those are hilarious. Oh, a oh, gas. Oh, oh. So please. Yeah. Go to BabylonBee.com slash plans. Subscribe. Become one of the elite. The few. The Babylon Bees. Hey, you know what? Two things go together. Gen Z and weird stuff.
It's like we're going to read words that we don't understand. So why don't we eat food and we don't even know what it is? We're going to read about weird Gen Z slang. We're going to try to guess what the words mean while we eat food. And we're going to guess what the food is. Is so that our, right? Let's bring Brandon in here. So we asked Brandon. We asked Brandon, our resident video guy. Oh, I thought you were going to say Asian guy. I'm, I was yeah. just trying to be careful. <laughs> Can you guys hear him okay? You hear him in there? I, I mean, mean sure. it is. I mean, it is true. I mean, uh, uh, I actually had this for the first time a few weeks ago. And I was pleasantly delighted. Okay. And I thought, man, I just got to bring this in and share it with the guys at the bean. Okay. So we're going to eat is this that and try to guess. Is that true or are you making that up? This guess? is actually, well, okay. half of it was true. Oh, Kellen has, so, has said he will not eat it because he doesn't like to eat this. things he doesn't know what it is. So this see? is the main attraction right and here. And you're not going to tell us what it is. This beautiful, rounded I have an idea object. of what I think it is. <laughs> you might be wrong. Okay. <laughs> and this was just, I just saw this on the menu, so I just threw this in. Okay. As, as Twizzle. So that looks like pizzle, like the stuff that is it pizzle or twizzle that you feed dogs? Beef twizzle, beef pizzle. <laughs> if it's, it's a dog, you like can feed them either. You, you look at the either. ingredients, like you get the chewy thing and it's all twirly, and then it says on there ingredients: beef twizzle. Now you said so you were pleasantly delighted. I was actually. I mean, I wasn't surprised because actually I ordered it and I expected it to be good, and I liked it. Okay. Oh, it has two sticks in one. Okay. Okay. Pizzle. So. Do we ever? Why do we always write segments where we chew? I'm gonna be honest. I just think it's testicles. Yeah, that's what I think too. Mm -hmm. I assume that's what you would guess, but you're wrong. Okay. It's ovaries. <laughs> also wrong. Okay. What does it look like to you, Callan, from a distance? Hold on. Why would you? It's a tongue. You take. You ate it, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, this tastes like testicles. <laughs> That's really what you well, thought? Well, according to the knowledge that I've procured in the past. Did they add this layer of stuff here? Is that part of the body part? I believe they added a little bit of fat yeah, to like increase fat. the flavor. I don't it believe that like is some kind of added attached. Fat there. Well, it looks like, is it some type of heart? Is it a heart of some type? It is not. Would you like a riddle? Mm. A riddle? In the morning, you have four. In the evening, you have two. To those with voluntarily, who voluntarily have one, they're oftentimes better than you. <laughs> Testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Ovaries. <laughs> Let's read a, a, some nutrition I'm, facts. I'm really bad at, okay. So I guess we're not doing slang when we do this. Mm. God, I mean, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. I can't do it. Very high. It's high in iron, okay. high in phosphorus. All right. Has a load of vitamins, super high in vitamin B12, in case you were wondering. I thought you were. Okay. And selenium. I didn't even know that was a thing. But it's high in that. Is it a ball of vitamins? <laughs> in a sense, it is. This is much less obscure, by the way. You you have had this. It's like an Achilles form. heel. Is it stretched testicles? <laughs> Stretchicles. <laughs> it's a little chewy. It's a little chewy. Yeah, it's chewy. It's got some flavor to it. A little flavor. So this one is not that bizarre. Okay. Okay. What is it? This is just chicken skin. Okay. Oh. Chicken skin. It's skin. just chicken skin. This is the best part. Sure. I mean, you eat, you eat a piece of fried chicken, you're just going to go for the skin. At least I do. This I is a debate between my, my wife. I love the skin, and she's like, don't touch it. I <laughs> yeah. throw it all in the trash. I get that rotisserie chicken from Costco and so good. just mm. for the skin. Oh, just yeah. the skin. Yeah. And it's $5, so you could just get 10 of them and just peel the skin off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah, sell it separately. Yeah. So you resell the meat back to Costco. Yeah, you, you, just want, a, you want a skinless rotisserie chicken? They need one that grows the skin back. Ten dollars. Sitting there. <laughs> okay, on this one. A wolverine. Do we have any final <laughs> guesses? Final guesses. I gave up. I, I have no oh wait, is, is there another body part that's round like that? You so not a heart. Four of them in the morning. I was being a little, you a mean, little loose in, in the. Four rim. in the morning. Bowel movements. But you have two in the evening. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> Go. Oh no, are Keep we going. fetuses? Keep going. No. <laughs> no <laughs> you got kind of close. misbehaving. What's that? You got kind of. I got close. In a, oh, in a so sense. it's baby something? Mm, kind of. Kind <laughs> it's of not. kind of a baby. How do you have more babies in the morning? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it not an animal? It is of what an is animal. It's from a human? It is from an it animal. It is of an animal. Okay. <laughs> what is shaped like that? I've played Operation. <laughs> Uh, is it <laughs> the funny bone? The funny bone. Just, yeah. no, uh, uh, no, I think you said it. Kidney. Tonsils. It's a kidney. There you go. Kidney. It's a kidney. It looks like a kidney. Of what? It's, it's a lamb kidney. Lamb, lamb kidney. kidney. Okay. Okay. Four yeah, in the morning, two in the evening. So what it's, is that? That's a dumb joke. It's like. Yeah. Wait. How know? does that? Okay. Work? So you know, like the 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 riddle where it's like, 
what walks on four legs in, yeah, in, right. in the morning, two legs in the evening, oh, yeah. or, and then three legs. So it's, um, yeah, when you're, when, you're, when you're a kid, you have two kidneys, and then you have... Two kidneys. Yeah. Kidneys. There you go. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, that, and that might a... be a little abstract. Yeah. I'll <laughs> the Hobbit that. would be dead. I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on The Gollum that. said that one. Frodo, the, it would end short. The Lord of the Rings would be a, never I'll work on that. <laughs> and also work on these because I don't think anyone's going to be enjoying these but me. <laughs> They're good. Not bad. Interesting. I did not enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Lamb kill. Huh. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Culturally thank enriching experience. Did those come from <laughs> alcoholic lambs? Yeah. <laughs> Is that the liver? Lamb <laughs> uncles? I guess so. <laughs> But that it would, goes through both, probably. So what, <laughs> so what culture eats lamb kidneys? A lot of cultures do. Well, I believe these are mm, Taiwanese. Okay. Yeah. And cannibal lambs. Yeah. <laughs> the go, cannibal I'll lamb also. community loves their own kidneys. I'll go bring these to the rest of the guys. Okay. I'm sure I'm champing at the hand bit. them around. Hand them around. I'm champing at the bit for these. We need to do this segment like when the mailman shows up at Mr. Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> You need to like have that door oh. and be like knock knock knock. Who's that? Like, oh, it must be a delivery. <laughs> it's Mr. <Yeah>. Weird Foodie. <laughs> Mr. Weird Foodie. Hey, you guys should check out his podcast, The Book Pile, where they talk about a book every week. And we don't eat anything. <laughs> and there's no chewing. While we're talking. One hundred percent less chewing. <laughs> in the <laughs> They'll edit out all the chewing in post. In the book episode. The book pile. They the just did, pile. They just did Fellowship of the Ring. I mean. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They it did this awesome. thing on there, and I think he's not doing it now, but they're like, if you write us a review, we'll, we'll buy you the actual hardcover of this book and sign it for you and send it to you. Yeah. And, we'll be, we're and doing that did it. until July 5th. So yeah, you're we're, doing it still. We're doing it again. If yep. you write a review of your podcast. You like uh -huh. it. Yeah, they're basically just like uh, buying people buying reviews. We should try this. You want to try it? No, because we. No. That's a lot of money, though. That's, yeah. Could be a lot I don't want to spend that much money. Well, yeah, yeah, it'd be the company. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a good podcast. <laughs> we make it funny. We do fiction books. We do nonfiction. We've done everything from nonfiction. We've done like bossy pants to. There's an episode where we roast how to win friends and influence people, yeah, which roasted. is one of my favorite okay. uh, episodes. <laughs> Just because, like, there's some good principles in there, but ultimately, every example, every success story ends with. And then I signed a contract for three million dollars. Like it's, <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with creating friendships. It's more just like just getting money. How to politely make other people do what you want. That's <laughs> that's what it really is. <laughs> and then fiction. Yeah, we're covering the Harry Potter books. We've done World War Z to Pride and Prejudice, and yet we're going through the Lord of the Rings trilogy. That's hmm. awesome. Oh. Sweet. Check it, it out. It is good. I've listened to a few episodes and I enjoyed it. Good. And now, it's time for this week's Heroes of the Faith. Catchy. I had a dream as a girl, like Teresa of the Sioux. I need to give this a whirl so I can lead the way. Woman priest is my pipes. call. Women preaching for all. Don't listen to St. Paul, cause I can lead the way. My ministry's growing. Don't, Excommunication don't comes to glowing. M. Div. Just flowing. Where you think the church is going? Hey, I was baptized. Are they allowed to answer in the Catholic Church? I can't hear you. It's too loud. It's really loud. So I date a lady. Justice doesn't look right. With only men. They practice God this. just called me. So I date a lady. Hey, I was baptized. And this is crazy. But God just called me. How long we do this for? <laughs> I can't take anymore. <laughs> All right. Okay. I hate that this song is going to be stuck in my head <laughs> forever. Okay, so before you watched it, what? How? How on board were you with ordaining a lady? And now I was one hundred percent on board, and now it's zero. It's over. <laughs> Gone. I was ready. I was ready to make the commitment. What about St. Paul? Are you on? To, I now. I now. I love St. Paul. <laughs> I hated him before, and now, if they're against St. Paul, I'm for St. Paul. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. I, I mean, if you ever want to make an argument for your position, just do a pop yeah. song. Find a Carly Rae Jepsen song. 
I don't know the original song that's based on. It's based on something. Call me maybe. Yeah. Call me maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick <laughs> starts singing. <laughs> 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 Well, that was beautiful, and you guys can look that up if you really want to. <laughs> if you really want me, I can hear the whole song. We'll link it. Was that Sister Act 3? Was that? <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah. So, I don't, well, I'm just thinking, like. I don't know what to say about it. I have nothing. <laughs> this, is, this is like growing up in the church is making cheesy parodies of things. Right. I didn't know Catholics did it. I thought that. Oh, yeah. I thought Catholics were more like, kind of like Mormons. Mormons are really smart. <laughs> Like, you don't find a lot of cheesy Mormon... I think there's a lot. There probably is, but, like, they... You know, like, they're smart. They go out and they just be, like, a comedian rather than being the Mormon comedian. Is there the Mormon comedian? Do you, you know, that, is that guy out there? There's a lot of them in Utah. Oh, yeah. okay. I've been to shows there, yeah, where they'll, they'll get up and for, like, 10 minutes they'll just talk about how, you know, when church is over and you can't get out of the pew because other people are talking in front of you. Like, it's just very, very like Seinfeld of Mormonism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They generally well, don't make it Mormonism, to right? like LA or New York. Okay. <laughs> their very specific. Hour of tight LDS material. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with seminary? I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we got another one here. We got, uh, a mishap. Okay, we're watching the cross. Eyes on the cross. See that big arrow that points to the cross saying you should look at it? Yeah. In case you don't know what arrows mean. Ooh. Oh. Oh, and then it does the right <laughs> hook. <laughs> does he keep going? I love the guy in the middle. Yeah, the guy waving. He's like, hey, you guys, <laughs> get out of the spirit. The cross just attacked the drummer. <laughs> In case, in case you guys didn't know, this is the hand signal for drummer has been crushed. <laughs> fell over on the drummer. <laughs> is that a sign that uh, yeah. modern worship is not approved of by the Lord? <laughs> I hope he took it really personally. Like maybe he has a secret gambling problem, and he's like, "Oh, this is why." <laughs> If you want me to stop, Lord, just tell me. Just give me the sign. Yeah. <laughs> a little heavy-handed with the metaphor there, Jesus. I, I played baseball, and I was never good at it. Like, I always prayed that the ball would never come to me. And when I was playing, I was in center field when I was 12. And this ball came... Uh, it was a home run, but the home run fence was like as high as my belly button. It wasn't very tall. Mm. And I uh, I was standing there ready for it, and it looked like it was going to go over. So I just instinctively, I didn't catch it because mm. I was like, this guy's going to get a home run. It's almost like I felt bad for him. Um, <laughs> so it barely went over the fence. And my whole team was like, why didn't you catch that? And they weren't there. So I was like, it was farther than it looked. But on the end side, I was like, oh, man, I could have been a hero. So I pray, I prayed that it would happen again. Wow. That this thing would happen again. And the next game, it happened again, and I didn't catch it again. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, look, okay, I, well, guess, okay, I no, guess prayer works, but... Uh, well, no, you can pray anytime you want now, but I'm so why do athlete. that time? Yeah. <laughs> and now that you know it works. I love that you did. You're so empathetic. You didn't want to ruin his really day. Like it was, he was about yeah. to hit this home run. Like I've never, I had never gotten one before, and like maybe it was this kid's first time, and I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> that's my brother. My brother would. He had this thing where he, if when he'd catch things, he'd suddenly like really tense up the moment it went to his hand, and he'd like, and like kind of like that. So mm -hmm. then he worked like way out in the outfield and baseball, and this thing was coming at him, and the ball, you know, and all of a sudden, his hands out to get it, and right at the last second, he goes. Like that, and it just goes boom, just right <laughs> off his face. <laughs> it made it so much worse. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, we got one more hero of the faith. You've heard "Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart." I don't know if you guys have that song, but uh, it's it's, you a, it's guys. a classic. You guys over you there, know, you people, you people <laughs> over there. I don't know what goes on in those Mormon, those LDS churches. So it's so it's a rendition, but I don't know if you've heard it with a Give sax thanks. solo like this. Yeah. Very thoughtful. We're in the mood. We're ready mm -hmm. to worship. Feeling it. Our hearts are prepared. It feels like something's coming. It's swelling. Here we go. Mm 
<laughs> it sounds like like the drunk Tom Waits of saxophone solos. <laughs> All I can think of is like a drunk guy doing interpretive dance on the stage <laughs> during this song. <laughs> it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> I don't expect the keyboard player, no reaction. He's right there with it. Nope, no, the jerk in his head. Nope, he's looking at you. He's looking at the camera. <laughs> Doesn't the guy next to the sax, he gives some kind of. He's looking over like. Like, oh, he's going to do this. Know. He's going to play the whole thing. Because <laughs> saxophones, you don't tune. So is he just playing the wrong notes? Yeah. Is he in the wrong key? Yeah. <laughs> See, if I, were the, if I were the keyboardist, I would have, just like my baseball Switch story, keys. I would, no, I would have just started playing like, <laughs> bah, bah, bah. <laughs> like, this is all planned from both of us. <laughs> we're both terrible. <laughs> It's crazy, though, that he was, like, technically, he was, like, on pitch. It was just a different pitch. Like, yeah. he was holding the notes well. You could <laughs> tell that he, he had practiced. It's bizarre to me that he, th- like, what what led to this moment? Yeah. Like, did, didn't they have a rehearsal? Was was I don't know how they got to <laughs> Or they didn't point. correct it anywhere until he got all the way to the very end of it. <laughs> it's all like, like nobody through. wanted to tell him. I don't know. I, I like to imagine it was a quantum leap moment. <laughs> <laughs> like Some, you wake up in a different body and they're like your saxophone solo starts in two minutes <laughs> what this is like a bad Bleed dream <laughs> yeah. after yeah. you have the dream about naked skydiving <laughs> you then transition into this dream so saxist well we like to what salute uh, the heroes of the faith today <laughs> so salute. a salute to the, the heroes the cross should have fallen on that guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been perfect. <laughs> well, it'd been a, the cro- it would be nice if a bunch of crosses fell on those girls. A cross falling can f- solve a lot of problems, actually. Hey, we're about to talk to Shannon Bream. Oh, yeah, from Fox News. That one? That one. She wrote a book about women in the Bible. Oh, there's women in the Bible? Yeah, not the ones who sing Ordain a Lady. Oh, uh, different ones. But ones who, like, drive tent pegs through people's heads and... Uh-huh. Do other stuff. Not just the ones who eat the wrong thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you just look still, have taste, you read it? I that was at the very kidneys. beginning. It yeah, was at the beginning of the Bible. Oh, yeah. I mean, Eve. I was trying to think of a woman who ate, like, a kidney or something. I was trying to think of a really obscure... Oh, like, you still oh, are probably thinking, in the book still of thinking kidneys. So, yeah. That's You're just the, confused because I've read the Bible before. <laughs> That's in the Book of Mormon where they eat the, they eat the forbidden kidney. Is yeah. that the, <laughs> take that I, was trying, I was going through all the food laws, you know, and Leviticus and stuff and all these like... Your mind was going eat food, woman, yeah, somewhere. Some, yeah, there's some like death penalty if you eat a kidney at three o'clock on a, seven, on a Sunday. Anyway, here's Shannon Breen. Here she is. <laughs> well, hi, Shannon. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome for having you. It's so intimidating <laughs> interviewing somebody who's a, like a world class interviewer. She's interviewed the president. Yeah. So, you president know, Biden. things happen. Which president? The true president? Or? The true president. No, I don't know. Oh. Have, you, have you ever interviewed Biden? You know what? I have interviewed uh, the f- current first lady. I have not interviewed President Biden. I have okay. interviewed Jill, Dr. Jill Biden, um, so and the former president and a couple of them, um, President Trump and others. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. So, no big deal. No big deal. Um, <laughs> So you have a book out, The Women of the I Bible do. Speak. So mm-hmm. you dug through the Bible and... Found all the women. You looked up all the different genders there are, and you just went with this one narrow one and made a the whole women. book. Yeah. About the women, yeah. When did you pick that one gender? Here's the thing. I thought I knew all these stories about women in the Bible, and I did because I grew up, you know, in a home where we were in church and Christian school and the whole thing. Um, I'm one of those. And um, when we really started going through and trying to whittle down which women we're going to have in, I was like, dang, we're leaving out a lot of good people. And I learned so much about every one of these stories. So as much as I thought, listen, I won the Bible Drill Award in Sunday school like 18 years in a row, I still had a lot to learn. Hmm. Yeah. So what did you learn? Did you guys ever do the Bible Drill, by the way? You know, where you'd have to get to the verse first. They'd be like, first on three. First one. Really? And you'd hold it over your head, and you're not supposed to cheat, but your fingers could feel a little bit about 
this is Old Testament, this is New Testament. Um, yeah, I did that. I, gosh, each one of their stories, I learned more depth about them. I learned a lot more about Deborah. Always been a fan of hers as a female judge and a leader of the nation of Israel at a really bad time. Um, so I learned a lot more detail about her story. Um, and really every woman that I dug into, I, I learned something, even if it wasn't strictly from the scriptures, I learned more about the context of the time that she was living in, um, just things that were more, just gave more depth to the story. And I felt like I got to know all of them better. So she was like the RBG of the Bible. Exactly. Judge. <laughs> and she went into battle. So if RBG also went into, you know, Operation Desert Storm or whatever, that was basically Deborah. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, you, do you have Jael in here, the, the lady who yes. hammered the tent peg? That's my favorite story in the whole Bible. Well, I always tell people that with this book. I'm like, we've got a queen. Of course, Queen Esther, a lot of people know that uh -huh. story. But we've got uh, a murderer. We've got a prostitute. Like, we got a good cross-section of ladies, um, which is further proof that God can use anyone. But yes, we had to include Jael because, um, you know, she's the one who fulfills Deborah's prophecy about this bad guy. Uh, getting delivered into the hands of a woman. And so, yeah, she brings them in, gives them the the milk or the yogurt, whatever you think it is, but something that was like a very soothing drink. He goes to sleep, she puts the covers on him and he never wakes up because yeah, it was a tent peg to the temple. She got the job done. <laughs> so what was the life lesson that you got out of that one? That things don't always make sense. Um, unfortunately, the Bible with <laughs> Yale doesn't tell us a lot of backstory. We don't know. All we know is, listen, she fulfilled a prophecy. So she clearly had this moment that God had planned for her to take out this bad guy, the general that was opposing, the, the leading the nation opposing Israel. Um, but that we don't always get all the answers because that's one of the things I get the questions most about for people who've read the book is like, why did she do that? What do we know? We just aren't told a lot in the Bible. So I think um, she's very illustrative for a number of reasons, but we that's one of my questions for God when I get to heaven. Yeah, that's one of the things that I think is cool about the Bible is that there's these stories that feel random. <laughs> and it's something, that, it's something that someone wouldn't make up just to be like, we're going to make this inspirational fable mm -hmm. or whatever. They're just like, yeah, this is what happened, so we're going to write it down. This lady just drove that tent peg right through his she killed the dude and yeah but you know that was one of the things i learned is that back then women in that society were actually the ones who were responsible for setting up the tents when they would move i mean they were literally homemakers so she would have been very probably physically strong and she would have known how to drive a tent peg um so those are the kind of nuggets some of them i'm not going to use in my life in 2021 uh, but many other nuggets i picked up in the book are actually <laughs> useful for today um so were there any women in the Bible you were thinking you should tell to not speak? Like Job's wife? <laughs> Shut up. Um, there are a couple that, uh, like all of us, from time to time, our mouths get us into trouble. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we focused on those who had things to say through their lives or through their words. And listen, some of them didn't verbally say a whole lot, but we, we see lessons speaking through their lives. But um, yeah, there are some women we didn't include for obvious reasons and some who, you know, maybe will make an appearance if there's a next time around because there really are so many good ones. It's not like we sat down and said like, all right, we have to make sure that people know God really loves women and values them, but there are only these 18. I mean, <laughs> it goes well beyond that. So we actually had a lot of good ones to choose from. Yeah, one of the interesting things, the way we read the Bible is we try to project like our current modern, mm -hmm. you know, ideas of gender and roles on, on the text. And, and that's true of everything, but especially of gender, we, we tend to read it in that light. And so you look at stories like how the women are the ones who went to the tomb. They're the ones who mm -hmm. believe Jesus. And, you know, just the people that are honestly writing this down in the Gospels are like, yeah, none of the disciples believed Jesus and they were all <laughs> scared. But the women were like, yeah, you know, Jesus is back. <laughs> And that's Let's a pretty go. cool role for women in the Bible that they were they were the ones uh, to, to yeah. go and witness his resurrection. Yeah, and you think about that. I mean, Mary Magdalene was sort of viewed as the first evangelizer, like that she went out to yeah. tell people like, hey, he actually did rise from the dead. She'd been so devastated. Like you said, the women went there um, to try to care for his body, thinking that they would have the opportunity to do that. Um, there were some people who were hiding out, who were afraid. They thought, I'm going to be next. People know I'm one of his followers. I don't want to be out there walking around. But the women were so... Um, in their devotion, going to see them, um, God knew who he was going to reveal himself to. And so the fact that it was Mary and that she runs off to get to tell everybody, pretty amazing, especially because in those days, women were not preferred witnesses, like in a legal proceeding or anything like that. I mean, they just were kind of um, viewed by much of society as sort of second class citizens. But Jesus, in his interactions, we see never, ever treated them that way. He was a little bit revolutionary, as you guys know, in a lot of ways. And that was one of them, his relationships with women. 
Yeah, some Chesterton talks about how uh, the way that Jesus treats women and children as well. He wasn't a man of his time when he mm-hmm. talked about uh, how amazing and special children are. That wasn't really kind of the opinion of the time. That came later. We take that for granted now. And same mm-hmm. with women. I just found that kind of fascinating. That and even slavery. Like he act, he didn't really talk much about it because he if he has that eternal view of things, I don't think he ever said anything about it. In, in his eternal view, he knew those things were going to be. You know, they're a blip in history. They're not going to be mm-hmm. a thing. So. Yeah, and think about how um, in the New Testament, the teaching we're, we're told that there is no difference between slave and master and Jew and Greek and those kinds of things that I think God's message was that we're all created in his image. I mean, he He clearly sees value in every single human life and definitely not a respecter of persons. He called people out who were respecters of persons um, who wanted to associate with the wealthy or the royalty um, when there were people of uh, every you know, class who, who needed redemption and who needed his love. I think about Sarah and Hagar is one of the, you know, first stories we have in the book where Hagar was owned. I mean, she was not a free woman. She wasn't just lady in waiting to Sarah. I mean, she was literally a slave, but she's the first person that has this interaction with God out in the desert where he comes to her and comforts her when she feels like her whole life is over. And she actually gives him the name, the God who sees me. And I think about how many times she would have been passed over if somebody comes in to see the family or to dine with them or to be part of some event. And she's just there in the background. Like she's not somebody that would get a lot of attention. She probably would be invisible. So I love that she has this um, tragic time and it ends up with God coming to her, a slave woman, and her giving him that name, like, you actually see me. Like, what an amazing thing for somebody whose whole life has probably been one um, where she's just been completely disregarded as a human being. Can you explain to me, like I'm five, the story of Mary and Martha? Because sometimes I read it and I'm like, Mary was just lazy <laughs> and Martha was uh, doing all the work. And then we're supposed to like admire Mary, but I... What, it, Mary's the one with washing the feet? No, Martha, wait, Martha's the one doing all the housework. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Am I right? Yeah, and Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet learning. Right. Um, oh, well, you're learning. Again, I'm mixing stories up. Yeah. yeah. But again, uh, you know, the situation, and, and there are other interactions too, but in that that big one that, you know, is taught in every women's Christian conference that there is, are you the Mary or the Martha right, who's right. a quiz? I mean, you know, that's out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> the thing about that was, again, Mary is sitting with the men, lean, learning at Jesus' feet. He was the very esteemed rabbi, whether you believed he was the son of God or not. At that point, he was very respected, and many people did believe, but others just thought he was this brilliant teacher, and it was not normal that women would be sitting and learning with his esteemed rabbi. So Martha is, and I, I can't, I always, when I hear her name, I hear Martha, 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 because <laughs> she's sort of the one that's like, I'm doing everything. And they're not helping with the hors d'oeuvres or anything. That's kind of the <laughs> attitude we have from her. And the fact that she complains to Jesus, who has nothing else to worry about, like redeeming all of mankind. Mm-hmm. Um, is so, you know, and she's like, why don't you tell her to help me? And he's like, I'm not going to tell her to stop from spending time with me and learning from me. Um, She's chosen the better thing. He wasn't saying what you're doing and serving people is a bad thing. But sometimes I think we do have to choose between busyness and service in church that looks good or something that is a laudable good thing versus actually spending time with God. So I guess I would say to a five-year-old, you know, is it more important for you to sit here and pray? And maybe we have a Bible story and you talk to Jesus and tell him how you're doing. And you, you ask him to um, help you through your day. We pray for people that we care about versus mommy really wants you to clean up your room and put away your toys. That's a good thing too. But maybe our prayer time with Jesus is the better choice. Especially when you yeah, clean your room. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Bible stories and prayer time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. See, sometimes you have to trick the kids into it, but then they grow into it. Perfect. So I know we're, we're, we're sticking mainly to your book questions, but I have you right here and you're a master interviewer and we have fallen into interviewing people. And I just want to know, like, do you have any uh, advice? How do you conduct a good interview? You know, sometimes if it's a longer form thing, like a podcast, right, I, I will normally do like 20 minutes or so with people. I like to, especially if it's a member of Congress, I will talk to their staff and find out things that they don't think I'm going to ask them about. Mm-hmm. Like, do they ride Harleys? Do they craft on the weekends? What do they do? And you can find out some really Um, I wouldn't say embarrassing, but personal things about people. (laughs) And when they think you're just going to talk to them about, you know, Senate Bill 1, 
Yeah. Um, they're not expecting you to say like, oh, I heard that you played in a garage band when you were in college and you guys actually have a CD and we have it here right now. <laughs> um, so I like to get kind of personal scoop on people that they're not expecting. Um, I'm a little bit more serious on TV. You got like three or four minutes with somebody and it's usually very content driven, yeah. policy driven. Um, but yeah, if you can get some secret scoop on people from their assistants or their staff, um, you can get some good surprising conversations. Can we talk to your assistant real quick? Yeah, real quick. She's on. not here right now, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> My dog has all the secrets. She's the one who's around all the time. By the way, you guys are in California. You're probably so sick of people on the East Coast talking about cicadas. Yeah. I am so happy that I think I finally outlasted them. But every dog here, including mine, is like binging on buffets of cicadas all day. They will not stop <laughs> eating them. And then it makes them sick. And you go to the vet for $500 and get their stomach oh, pumped. So yeah. the long national nightmare of cicadas is over, at least for the next 17 years. Wow. That's the, Maybe I should move the to the time. West Coast. You guys didn't have to deal with that. We didn't. Do yeah. they come here? They have them like out in Palm Springs. Yeah, but I, thought I, I they didn't did. know. I didn't know they did this whole weird like hibernation. I know. It was, yeah, oh, it's some yeah. crazy. It's it seventeen years on like mm -hmm. clockwork. So yes. Weird. So I uh, listen. I'm I, I'm already plotting out and said to my husband, wherever we live in the next seventeen years, it cannot be in this geographic span of the United States. I will not do this again. Yeah. They look big. They're big, right? They're big, and they say they're not going to hurt you, but still, it's super know, gross yeah. when they land in your hair yeah. or get on you, which. I, my, I try to run every morning, and when I would do that, there are carcasses everywhere. Ah. They don't live very long, so you're like crunching along on your yes. run, and then they land on you, and they sort of stack, and you're pulling them out. They're not going to hurt you, but I, they are like the size of a battleship maneuvering around with these big orange-red beady eyes. <laughs> um, you don't want them in your hair. It's like a biblical plague. I know. Well, between that and the pandemic, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> we're getting there. We've had some pretty heavy rains today, too, so again... Noah's Ark right Noah's here Ark behind on, me on the wall there. might come back into play. Yeah. The wrath of God is poured out via cicadas. <laughs> I hope not. He promised us that's we're not getting that again. Well, so. he didn't say anything about cicadas, though. He just no, he didn't. No. He I think the cicadas us. keep us humble. That's part that's of his true. purpose in them. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, your book is out now. The Women of the Bible Speak. So everybody check that out. It's on Amazon and, you know, everywhere that you can buy books. All the book places. All the book places. Yep, so. you got it. Thank you guys for having me. And, yeah, um, you. you know, when we come out with a book, Women of the Bible Who Didn't Speak, um, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're hoping you can do Trans Women of the Bible because who's doing that? Throwing that out there. We'll I don't think that book is you. coming. No. <laughs> Sad. All right. Well, thank you for joining thank us, you. Shannon Bream. See you guys. Well, that was a great conversation with Shannon Bream. You know what, Ethan? It sure was. <laughs> what do you think, Kellen? Did you I enjoy that? <laughs> I agree with you, too. <laughs> Perfect. Especially that one thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, everybody agrees with that one Very thing. Very interesting and profound. <laughs> now, um, anytime we need Kellen to agree with us on something, we have the clip. We have the clip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know what else tastes like kidneys? <laughs> T-shirts from the Babylon Bee store. T-shirts from the Babylon Bee. We got new kidney-flavored T-shirts. New kidney-flavored ones. Scratch and sniff. This oh. one says support fake journalism and it's hilarious. And it has I get lots of compliments. Babylon on this one. B logo. Babylon if you like B logos. Logo. If you like to be a bill walking billboard for the Babylon B. You can pay us yeah. to be our billboard. It's exactly. a great strategy. So ba do that. Babylonb.com slash plans. No, no that's, that's <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Shop.babylonb.com. Shop. You go there, you can get some shirts. And if you're a subscriber, you have a discount code. Kellen's going right now. <laughs> if you're a subscriber, you get to choose the size. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's random. I really miss Adam Ford. So we wrote an article that was probably our best article ever. Yeah. Real multi-level comedy. Our best joke is, is Victoria. Well, we can ask. We have a professional stand Oh, yeah. Comic can you here. rate this? Victoria's Secret to Replace Angels with Fattest Woman of All Time. Your mom. <laughs> Hey, he laughed. <laughs> he told me it was funny earlier. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 10 out of 10 is what Kellen said. Joke. Yeah, 10 out of 10 joke. Now cut to him saying, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and somebody didn't like it. And so we got an email from Trisha about this article. Trisha. And she says, you should stick to the garbage going on in the world and leave mother out of the center. <laughs> 
mother. <laughs> Leave mother out of the center. I love <laughs> the idea that statistically at least a couple people have never heard a your mom joke. It's probably so true. they just yeah, thought this was the, context the most vicious joke <laughs> <laughs> that came out of left field. Like, they don't even know my mom. Yeah. Why would they? <laughs> have you ever met somebody that calls their mom mother? Like, not my mother. But and they talk me. about her? Oh, yeah, no. I'm going to mother's house this afternoon. Yeah, me and mother were having tea today. (laughs) (laughs) There's something wrong there. There's something weird going on there. There's a screw loose. Don't do that. I get it. Just don't do that. uh, uh, This woman is sister bear. (laughs) What? (laughs) Instead of mother bear. I'm I'm keeping up with this guy. I like this. You're like the interpreter for my (laughs) jokes. Although, isn't it mama bear? Is it? It's mama bear. Sissy bear? Okay. Not yeah. mother no, bear. you're true. You're, you're right. I'm true. <laughs> you are true. You are true. <laughs> I don't know what you guys say. I'm trying to fit in with your, <laughs> with your Gen Z here. Christian slang. Hey, I'm Gen X, bro. Yeet. Uh, and I do like that Trisha thought we were talking about her mom specifically. Her specific mom. <laughs> mother. Leave mother out of this. Leave mother. <laughs> <laughs> I love the mother's back there in her recliner looking offended. <laughs> Leave mother. <laughs> it sounds like, yeah, like she's being raised by a British nanny. And I love that you should stick to the garbage going on in the world. Like, specifically, it has to be the garbage. Make fun of the on. bad stuff going on. Leave mother out of this. <laughs> I like, I wonder if her mom read this article and was like, wait a minute. That means it's about me. Yeah, wouldn't she think it's about her mom? But then, yeah, I don't know. And she thought it was about her, and she's like, don't worry, mother. I'm going to write an angry email. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that she says, you should stick to the garbage going on in the world. I hope you guys responded to her with like, all right, your dad's fat too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's some garbage. I should Your parents, that. both of them. <laughs> yeah. Not you specifically. Uh, That's the uh, Not... Well, this was an episode of a show that occurs every <laughs> week. <laughs> Kellen will never be back. You guys should watch Kellen's stand-up comedy. You should also check out his podcast. Yeah, his podcast, book pile. stand-up comedy, and other stuff. And if you subscribe Maybe to the, the Babylon Bee, you get to hear more crazy stories from Kellen. So yeah, because we we're going to go in the subscriber portion. We're asking the second 10 questions. I forgot to tell him we're going to do that. And, we, and we've got the bonus hate mail. Did I fix those yet? Because I need to fix those. Patrick tried to. We're going to okay. find out how they got fixed. Or, uh, we'll see. All right. We're going to rate Patrick's questions. Here we go. Coming up next hey, for Babylon B subscribers. This is what real rich, rich guys wear. How many people have worn this one? Just everybody who's been on the show. Is that you? <laughs> You get to erase any three people from history, living or dead, who are they? This is parentheses, Kyle. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't remember. It's, it's, giving you, it's giving you suggestions. Do you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or maybe recommit yourself to him? Hey, this is right this, now? Yeah, I did this before. This is the same it's as a well. recommit. Is that why I get it? Because questions? you guys, you guys are really asking, like, so are you still Mormon? <laughs> <laughs> After all <Yeah>. this, <laughs> wondering what they'll say next. The rest of this podcast is in our super exclusive premium subscriber lounge. Go to BabylonB.com slash plans for full length ad free podcasts. Kyle and Ethan would like to thank Seth Dillon for paying the bills. Adam Ford for creating their job. The other writers for tirelessly pitching headlines. The subscribers and you, the listener. Until next time, this is Dave D'Andrea, the voice of the Babylon Bee. 